If you're a car enthusiast, chances are you've definitely heard of Chevrolet small block engine. And no, not just the LS engine that's been produced more recently, but the first small block engine, the non-LS small block, that was introduced for the 1955 model year and began at 265 cubic inches. Although it wasn't the first overhead valve V8 engine to be placed under hood in a car, the Chevrolet small block did revolutionize the automotive industry in part due to its reputation for longevity, durability, and also because, frankly, it was available in many affordable cars, thus endowing numerous vehicles that were purchased by the American public with good, reliable, powerful transportation. These first-generation small blocks, as I previously mentioned, start out at 265 cubic inches. They actually at one point would produce a 262 cubic inch small block V8 based on this original design, And while many individuals know and love the Chevrolet 350 cubic inch V8, there is one iteration of this first generation small block that's often overlooked and forgotten, in part due to how Chevrolet marketed the engine. And that is the largest small block that Chevrolet produced in this generation one small block, the 400 cubic inch Chevrolet small block V8. The Chevrolet Small Block 400 was introduced in 1970 and had a 4.125 inch bore and 3.75 inch stroke. That was the largest bore of any Chevrolet Small Block and it necessitated a couple different modifications to the overall block versus engines like the 350. In particular, given the large bore, the 400 cylinders were Siamese, meaning they effectively touched. And therefore, those cylinders required steam holes in the block, as well as the head gaskets, to ensure that adequate cooling could be provided to the engine cylinders. It was a bit of a similar approach that Oles would later employ on the 403 cubic inch engine, which was also a small block. That Oles 403 was derived off of the same engine block that produced the 350, and not the engine block that produced the 455 cubic inch V8s that Oldsmobile would make. In any event, the 400 when it was introduced was really put into production not as a high performance engine, but more as a torquey engine in large passenger size luxury cars and trucks. It was designed for torque and not overall horsepower, and as a result, in its early years, it was only equipped with a two barrel carburetor. It wouldn't be until 1974 that a four-barrel carburetor could be outfitted atop the 400 cubic inch V8. Interestingly, while the 400 would come with a four-barrel in 1974, by that point it had a few modifications that actually made the internals a bit weaker. More specifically, only the 1970 to 1972 400 cubic inch V8s had four-bolt mains during that time period, And after those model years, the 400s had two-bolt mains. I suppose Chevrolet figured it didn't matter much how strong the lower end was on these engines and decided to switch from four-bolt to two-bolt mains simply because the 400 was never intended as a high RPM engine and really was intended for torque, as I mentioned, over horsepower. Nonetheless, the 400 was a very reliable engine and it didn't really have a tendency to overheat unless it was outfitted with different head gaskets and cylinder heads that really weren't designed for it. Thus, the 400 cubic inch V8 gained a relatively good reputation amongst buyers for its low-end torque and overall reliability. It did offer a few more horsepower, at least in two-barrel form, than the 350 cubic inch V8s that were in other vehicles. For example, in 1972, the 400 was rated at 170 net horsepower versus the two-barrel 350 that Chevrolet offered, which was rated at 165 horsepower. In 1973, this horsepower difference would be, again, five, with 350 cubic inch V8s making 145 horsepower and 400 cubic inch V8s making 150 horsepower. 1971, engines were still rated on the gross horsepower scale, so it's a bit tougher to discern what the true difference in power was. The 350 was rated at 245 horsepower, And the 400 was rated at 255 horsepower, a difference of 10. But again, those are gross horsepower figures where the rating is performed or is achieved without the exhaust system, the air cleaner, and the accessories on the engine. Net horsepower ratings, which the industry switched to in 1972, have all those things affixed to the engine when they're rated for horsepower.
Now, a very strange thing happened along the way with the 400 small block V8, which perhaps caused it to be forgotten by many different automotive enthusiasts. And that is that Chevrolet had a very confusing branding scheme for the 400 cubic inch small block, as well as what they labeled a 400 cubic inch big block engine in their brochures and advertisements from the 1971 to 73 model year. More specifically, look at this page from the 1972 Chevrolet full-size vehicle brochure and notice the engine options that are listed. If you take a look, you'll see that there are two 400 cubic inch V8s in the brochure. One, the so-called Turbo Fire 170 horsepower 400 V8, and then a 210 horsepower Turbo Jet 400 V8. I honestly have no idea why Chevrolet marketers would want to have the same engine cubic inch designation for what was effectively the 400 cubic inch small block and a 402 cubic inch big block V8. The engines are totally different, not even remotely similar. And while Chevrolet certainly did change the name of the engine from turbo fire, if you got the small block, to turbo jet, if you got the big block, I can't imagine that that nomenclature change was enough to tell buyers that these engines really were completely different. Perhaps part of the issue was that the 400 small block actually displaced 401 cubic inches if you calculate out its displacement based on its bore and stroke dimensions. And the so-called 400 turbo jet V8 displaced 402 cubic inches. And maybe Chevrolet marketers thought it'd be too confusing to say a 400 or 401 cubic inch V8 and a 402 cubic inch V8. And thus they decided to just change the name on the engines, but give them the same cubic inch designation. But whatever the reason was behind that decision, I think in part, this is one of the reasons why the 400 cubic inch small block is really not known to many different car aficionados, while the 402 big block and certainly the 396 big block as well as the 454 are. And the 350 cubic inch small block is obviously as well and other variations of the small block like the 305s, the 307s, 265s, 283s, 327s. And there are of course many other variations of the small block all the way down to a 262 cubic inch V8 as well. In any event, having driven Caprices that have been outfitted with this 400 cubic inch V8, I can attest to its torquiness. It actually drives very smoothly, very powerfully. You don't have the passing power of the big block turbojet V8, but you have plenty of around town scoot and you're really not longing much for power in one of these big cars anyway. These are cars that were designed to just allow you to kick back, relax, and get to where you're going in style and with comfort. And it wasn't about speed at that time, although those cars are relatively quick given their overall size. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on Chevrolet's 400 cubic inch V8. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.